Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, our priest is in the blind is due to Yahweh Shema with Shai. Secondly, this brother Yardan, W5 Detroit, come back as we get on the cold cut. We're going to dive into Sabrak, the lighter chapter, real quick, getting straight to the point, getting into the cream of the crop. All right. Abu Rajiz, I will be able to break it all down through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema with Shai, and Israel may get edified. We're going to dive right into it. This is Sabrak 38 of 24. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure, and he that hath little business shall become wise right that's playing upon tables right the more leisure in other words the more free time you have the more time you have to read study pray and fast and build yourself up in the name of the lord right in the name of the heavenly father you have a shmel with shy and you're not going to be a mess you're going to pray more you're going to fast more you're going to be mighty in this thing you're not going to be distracted by harlots uh heathen or anything else that this world may have to offer Verse 25, how can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow and that glorieth in the gold, that driven, that's like that driveth the oxen and is occupied in their labors and whose talk is of bullocks, right? In other words, how are you going to gain wisdom if you're so occupied in your work? And it starts listing a plethora of works and uh, professions. For an example, farmers, certain farmers, hey, that's a stressful job. In fact, when you Google the top 20 or top 25 most stressful jobs i believe farmers is the top 10 when you're a farmer hey man all hell could break loose you have to be diligent in your work and as we continue to, to read on you find that these other jobs you have to be just as critical and uh, serious in your work and your labor verse 26 he giveth his mind to make furrows and is diligent to, to give the kind fodder so every carpenter and his workmaster that laboreth night and day, that and, and they that cut and grave seals are diligent to make great variety, and give themselves to counterfeit imagery to watch to finish work. In ancient world, we had the temple, we had to make pomegranates in the house of the Lord, and we had to do all these chiseling. You can't mess up. If you mess up, you're finished. You're out of there. And somebody's going to pick up your place. That's how serious that job was. You can't lollygag doing certain professions. If you lollygag as a carpenter, the whole house is going to fall apart. If you lollygag as a, uh, and, and make engraving images, the whole, the whole thing is going to mess up, man. Verse 28. The smith also sitting by the anvil and considering the ironwork, the vapor of the fire wasted through his flesh, and, his, and he fighteth with the heat of the furnace, the noise of the hammer, and the anvil is ever in his ears, and his ears look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh. He setteth his mind to finish his work and watch it to polish it perfectly. That's playing upon tables. Google a blacksmith. Google an ancient world blacksmith. See how diligent he looks. Look at him and say he's going to mess up. No, he's not going to mess up. He's diligent. But as you do these sad professions, the less time you're in the half of the Lord. And of course, we have to work in a society. But this is more so directed if you give your whole heart into it, your whole mind into it. Right? And even then, even when we're at work, we still can't really meditate upon the Lord like that because we have to be so focused and narrowed in on our certain jobs. And it sucks. It's unfortunate because we'd rather spend our time meditating and talking about the scriptures and Heavenly Father. So doth the potter sitting at his work and turning the wheel about with his feet, who is always careful, set at his work and maketh all his work by number he, fa he fashioned the clay with his arm army and bowed down his his strength before his feet he applied himself to lead it over and he is diligent to make clean the surf the furnace all these trust to their hands and every one his is wise in his work that's playing upon tables they're wise in their work without these is, cannot a city be inhabited and they can, shall not dwell where they will nor go up and down they shall not be sought for in public council nor sit in high in the congregation they shall not sit in a, a judge's seat nor understand the senses of judgment they cannot declare justice and judgment and they shall not be found where parables are spoken but they will maintain the state of the world and all the desire is in the work of their craft these people they maintain the state of the world you have certain cogs in a machine as they say certain men on earth were designed and destined to be a fireman designed and destined to make tires that some people somebody out there in the world 
they love making tires. Let's be real. Some people, with some men in the world, they love making clothes. Certain men, they love tap. Certain women, they love this. They're made to love those things just so the world can function. Right? All for the grand design and purpose of the Heavenly Father. Right? And that's very deep when you think about it. Some people are just cogs in a machine. That's one of the many reasons why we tell our people, you don't know what's going on. You're just a cog in a machine. You're just here to keep this place pumping. But with that, I'm going to be as Roshalawam. Make sure that you're always diligent in the Lord. And I give your mind over to, to your career and your uh, your work. You know, or else you're going to perish. But with that, I'm going to be as Roshalawam.